students of the day. So this is would be a um, like social studies. I would think nine ten, but according to the um, my word document, the thing that Ellen just showed me, it's a twelfth grade reading. Which is why we are going to have a great reading strategy to go through this document. So, the title for our class today is, Was the attack on Pearl Harbor really such a shock? And what does China have to do with it? Which is funny because you know that song, like, what's love got to do with it? I've been singing that song all week because of that sentence. So, today for our learning target, and this is going to be more of today and tomorrow, depending on how far we get. It will be, we will use a reading strategy to analyze primary source documents and discover the tension between the U.S. and Japan. So, we've been talking about primary source documents for a long time, so you guys should be really familiar with that. Along with analyzing, kind of like discovering, reading through the articles, um, to find out what actually happened. You're not reading it from a textbook, you're reading it from the actual sources. So, we want to remember for our whole class, our whole class motto is, we want to express our historical knowledge with expertise, and that means language. I know that you guys are probably really sick of me having you look up words in the dictionary, but it's going to happen for the rest of your time with me, which is why you all love me. So, <laughs> this is a short... Um, a short part of what the lesson would be, just a short part of the activity for the sake of time. It's, uh, so, for the beginning of the lesson, I would give like a 10, 15 minute background knowledge. So, I'm going to give you a little blurb. Um, so, the Japanese attacking Pearl Harbor really wasn't such a shock to at least the government of the United States. It might have been a shock to the people. Um, and so you're like, what does China have to do with World War II? Like, I've never even heard of that country in this World War II. <clears throat> and it's because the Japanese attacks on the United States go all the way back to even before World War I and tensions there. So Japan claimed a, spe a special sphere in um, China, which the U.S. didn't like because the U.S. made a lot of money. China and they had what was called an open door policy and that dates back to 1899 which was well before World War One. so the United States thought that all countries should have equal opportunity to market their products to China and the United States did the United States did this through the Philippines which also played a big role in World War II which we will learn about later um, but in 1931 Japan seized Manchuria which was a big upset, which violated all the previous pacts that they did. Um, can anybody tell me what was happening in the United States around the year of 1931? What like major event? Allison? The Great Depression. Yeah, the Great Depression. So the United States, as well as a lot of European countries, had their own problems, so they couldn't even deal with Japan going into China. So Japan kind of got like an open pass, to kind of go and take that over. Um, but once again, uh, the United States had lucrative trade in China, and so when Japan went in, they were kind of going to cut that off. So <clears throat> there was really big tension, uh, and before, in the little actual lecture, it kind of goes through more through that, because there's four primary source documents that we would look at. Um, but the US ambassador wrote a letter to the government of the United States, the ambassador for Tokyo in 1932, and he specifically said, the Japanese military has been built for war, and it feels prepared for war, and would welcome war. It has never yet beaten and possesses unlimited self-confidence. I am not an alarmist, but I believe that we should have our eyes open to all future contingencies. So this is what the ambassador wrote to the government. So our first primary source document that we're going to look at is the open door policy, which is where all of it began. This document right here is where all of the tension began. So as I pass it out, the first step we're going to do is just read it to yourself. I'll give you a couple minutes. And as you do that, 
just look up, stay silent, no talking, but just look up and I can see what everybody's saying. All right, so just as a recap, can anybody tell me what we're trying to accomplish today? Shout it out. Figure out if Pearl Harbor was surprising or not. Yes, thank you, Nikki. Um, and um, what, why is, Analyzing primary sources so important. Can anybody tell me? It's not left up to interpretation. Yeah, so you who gets to interpret? Me or you? Each of us. I'm Each of us, it. exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to do this with a little reading strategy. And for this primary source document, we're going to do it as a class. And theoretically, I would then have you do the second one within groups, and then the third on your own. So we're going to go through the steps for this reading strategy as we read through this again. The first step is read the document by yourself. Check. You already did that. Next, we're going to read it out loud as a class. And once we see a word, 
those 10 words that are up there, we're going to stop. You're gonna, we're going to finish the sentence, but then we're going to stop. And then I'm going to ask you to define it. If you don't know the definition, quite all right. I don't expect you to. Take out your phone or your computer and Google it. So then we're going to define it. But then we're going to say it in our own words. And then after that, we're going to describe how that word fix, fits into this content. And I'm going to do the first one just to have an example. So we're going to start at the top of this document. At the time when the government of the United States was informed by that of Germany that it had leased from His Majesty, the Emperor of China, the port of Gaoxiao and the adjacent territory in the province of Shantun, assurances were given to the ambassador of the United States that Berlin, by the Imperial German Minister for Foreign Affairs, that the rights and privileges ensured by treaties with China to citizens of the United States would not thereby suffer or be in any wise impaired within the area over which Germany had thus obtained control. So the first word we have up there is least. So I previously looked up this definition and it means to grant property or to lend to. So I have read it out loud and I had finished the sentence but I stopped when I saw a word. I defined it. So least means to grant property or to lend something and to say it into my own words and to re relate it to my own words. Um, so my dad is a farmer in eastern Washington and a lot of farms actually don't own their land. Land is owned by either a company or somebody who is very wealthy and it is leased or rented to the farmers. So the farmers don't actually own the land that they work and live on. It's leased to them. So that's how I remember the word leased. So, in this sentence, at the time when the government of the United States was informed that the Germany that it had leased from his majesty, his emperor, the emperor of China, the port. So that means the port that they are talking about adjacent to this territory, it was leased from his majesty, the emperor of China. So that port was kind of like given to use, but not ownership. So that's the big difference. So we're gonna have we're gonna start from the beginning, and I'll I know it's kind of hard because the words are up there they're not on your paper. So I'm just gonna when you get to the end of a sentence I'm just gonna stop you, and then we're gonna do it as a class. So we're also gonna popcorn. So we all know what popcorning is, yeah. If you don't, <laughs> raise your hand. Popcorn. Okay, no problem. So when we read, if, I'm gonna say Alex. You read the first paragraph. So then when he's done, he's going to pop or he's going to choose somebody else in the class oh. to read the second paragraph. So Alex, we've already done the first vocabulary word, but you're on to the second. More recently, however, the British government... Oh, sorry, Alex. Start at the first paragraph again. <laughs> That's my problem. At the time when the government of the United States was informed by that of Germany that it had leased from His Majesty the Emperor of China to the port of Kiaochao and the adjacent territory in the province of Shantung, assurances were given to the ambassador of the United States at Berlin by the Imperial German Minister for Foreign Affairs that the rights and privileges ensured by treaties with China to citizens of the United States would not thereby suffer or be in any wise impaired within the area over which Germany had thus obtained control. All right, so our second word in there is province. So does anybody know what a province is, or somebody Google it and give us a definition? A province, isn't it like an area of land? Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of like a It's similar to a county. state. Yeah, 